This video walks you through a very simple but very powerful tool for resource allocation and resource management. I have done previously a video of a fully automated resource management system working with several projects and various types of resources and the allocation was completely automated. But this time I wanted to give more flexibility on resource allocation, making it easier to fine tune resource availability for project or task requirements. So it works this way. There are two components. The first, a project with requirements based on periods, and those periods could be days, weeks, or months. Then you have a resource list where you input the resource availability, including leave, part-time work, or maybe the resource is also working on a, another project. So you can then start allocating resources to your tasks, and immediately you will see if there is a resource conflict. So the task will be highlighted in red, and the resource symbol will also show in red, which is a standard for Microsoft Project, by the way. The system also tells you how many weeks are in conflict for a specific task. You can also have a view on resource availability after that resource has been allocated to a task. You can check from there which resource could potentially replace uh, another resource, or you could just move the task to remove uh, the other allocation. That's another option that you have. The system also has a way for you to highlight a very specific resource, making it easy for you to identify where the overall allocation comes from. Finally, we will create a very easy to use link to allow you to quickly jump from the project view or from the task view uh, to the resource view. Welcome to this tutorial. Well, let's build this together. First, I've created two tabs, one for projects and one for resources. So that will be those two components that we will be interacting. So the first tab, projects, uh, if you want to build this with me, you, you can go ahead and build this now. Top, I have a description across 12 columns here. I just merge it and I put a description. And then I choose 12 periods. I mean, as usual, you can extend it as, as big as you want, but I just want to, to limit myself. And for periods, I have chosen weeks. So you could choose days, year, whatever. Um, if you want to put a specific date here, I suggest you have a look at my other videos where I do task lists and, uh, and the likes, where I explain how to put dates into this, but I didn't want to waste too much time on this, just doing the full process again. I want to go straight to the point. So you just put your periods here, and, uh, and for this exercise, I will be using weeks. So this is where your tasks will go. Um, obviously, same as for periods, you can have as many rows as you like. Now, on the left-hand side, I have four rows. The one that I have in pale yellow, that's the one where you are supposed to put things in. Uh, they are input uh, here too, for input. And the one in white here, that um, uh, they are the one that will be calculated. So the first column on the left here is for tasks. For the second one here, we will be allocating resources. Here we'll put a status, and here we'll put the periods of over allocation. I'm not sure yet if it's extremely useful, but uh, when you have a lot of periods, I think that will come handy. We leave a blank when the resource is required and not allocated, but when you don't want to put a resource, which, which is possible sometimes, you just put NR not required. So this way you won't have everything read for it. On, on this tab, I'm just going to input some, some tasks here, and I'm just going to put some random allocation. Uh, I mean, we're progressing through the project, so I think that um, I will put more towards the beginning, and then uh, as you progress, you can have less and less here. Uh, okay, so here I'm just going to put that a bit bigger. So here, this is your starting point. You have a project and you have requirements. So requirements are per resource. So if you need two resources for one, for instance, you will duplicate the task. But uh, you stipulate here that you want 50% of a resource, 100% of a resource. When you don't need a resource for that week, you just put nothing in, obviously. And that's it. So we have a project's requirement. Now we build another tab. It's important that you have the same period here. So if you want to make sure that you get the same period here, you can just refer back. You put equal. Uh, you put refer back to the first one here. And then you drag it across. So, as I was saying, you can have dates here instead. So here, very simple, you just put the resources. And here, for each week, 
you will put the availability. So I could have put a, a generic, you know, this resource available 100% all the time, this one 50%, but I just thought I'll be more precise if there are holidays or if there are a period where this person is involved in another project. Uh, I want to be more precise. Now, let me just input some that I might give you a better idea. So I'm just going to input some here. And here I'm just going to input some availability. What is in pale yellow is for the same as before. It's uh, to be input. And what is in white is not to be touched. So I have an NR here. So if you remember during the project, I said we will put NR when there is no resource required. So here I want to I want to trick the system a bit and I want to create a dummy resource called NR and I want to give it plenty of allocation. Uh, that will make our Excel easier to, to do. Why not? So I'm just going to click on this. I'm just going to put data and I'm going to put group and I'm going to hide this. So this way there's no confusion. So here what I like to do also is just to be able for us to identify the resource who have less than 100% availability. I just want to put a very subtle uh, conditional formatting. So I'm just going under home. I put conditional formatting. Is it co uh, colors, for instance, here? And if I can grab one, I will take this. So this is not subtle. Um, if you want something a little bit more subtle, you go under this, you do manage rules, you edit the rule. And then uh, first of all, for I just need only two color scales. And I will put the lowest value, I'll put a number zero, and I will put zero. And the maximum value, I'll put a number, and I will put one, uh, which is 100%. Here I'm going to put something maybe a little bit uh, like this. And for that one, I'm going to put uh, something with green. Let's see. So here, for instance, a zero percent, obvious. 50%, 75%, and there you go. So we have our resources here and we have our projects. So now we need to uh, do some work. First, we need to allocate the resource for each task. In order to do that, I'm going to create another tab. I'm going to call it the settings tab. Here I will put my validation table. So bear with me on this. What I will be doing is first, I will be creating a none here that so that will <laughs> come into play later on and then what I do here is I'm just creating I'm just putting second I'm just putting NR which is uh, the resource that we have identified as NR and now after I'm just going to go to the first one here and I'm just going to drag it down and then uh, I don't need that NR again so this will be what I will use to refer back to the resource. I'm just going to put, uh, so this is a hidden stuff, so it doesn't need to be very pretty. So I'm just going to dump it this way. Now, when we go back to the projects, what I want to do is to be to validate this. So I'm just going to data, uh, data validation, if I can find it, that's it. And I'm just going to put a list. And then I'm, I'm going to go here. So the reason why I put NR first is I want this to come up first in my list and I'm going to take everything here. So here now I can just choose. Now there's a zero that I don't really like so I'm just going to have to remove that later on. But for the time being that will do. So here you can start allocating resources to, ta to tasks and I'm just going to do that now. So that's it, I've allocated my resource. So we have this and that. Now in order to progress, I need to duplicate this table here. So we are two things. We are dealing with Excel, so we don't have access to a database, uh, which has its advantages and its drawbacks, I suppose. The, the challenge with databases are not easy to visualize sometimes, um, but they are easier to work with in the program. But uh, I think we need to use Excel weakness as a strength here. So the advantage of uh, Excel is that you can actually see the, the database. Uh, but what I want to do here, I want to highlight here the resource conflict. So now the, the challenge that I have is I need to do some calculations. So in order to highlight this, I could put the calculation into the conditional formatting. 
But I don't want to do this because that would be very complicated and that would be very difficult to, to visualize as well. Instead, uh, the trick, uh, quote-unquote, that I'll be doing is I'll be duplicating this and then for the conditional formatting, I will be referring to the duplicated uh, table. How do we duplicate this? Quite easy. So I'm just going to this line here and here I'm just uh, referring to the first one. here. I'm just doing this and then I'm doing this for here as well. So, and I, then I will drag all that down until a certain point, of course, doing a little bit of formatting here. Once again, it doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, that's just because I, uh, I want to use this as a reference. So that, that actually, I can hide it uh, in the end. So actually, uh, those zeros really bother me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something about it. I'm just going <laughs> to check that if C5 is uh, not equal to blank, is equal uh, not equal to blank, then I'm going to bring back C5. Otherwise, I'm going to bring a blank. So I'll do the same for the resources later on. So here you go. So here I can just drag that down and I can just move that across. And now those zeros have disappeared. So now I just, uh, I know that uh, this is the place where I want to check. So this is the duplicated table. Now we have this. So this in theory, I'm just going to put it back to white actually, because this is not to be touched. I am duplicating the resource. I'm doing the, the same trick that I did for the projects, the duplication of the projects here. Uh, I'm doing the same trick with the uh, resources. Uh, I want to calculate the availability after allocation. So I just copy the heading here and here I just don't input uh, the resource. I just refer back to the, to the resources there. And I make sure that I include also the NR here. And I input this formula. So this is where we need to concentrate, I suppose. We have only two formulas that are critical in this spreadsheet, but we really need to understand them well. I go under the projects. I do a sum if under the project of all the tasks that require that resource in that week. So I go there and I check how many are using these resources for that week and I add it all up. And this is where I do the sum if. And then I deduct that from the availability, uh, availability sorry, that they have. So for instance, here we are John Edwards. He's got 0% availability. But we unlock uh, is not required for uh, the first week. All right. So if I were to put John Edwards here, for instance, then here he should uh, be giving me the availability minus 50% because it is required in that week. Uh, but... Uh, I'm going to put back this one here. So we just need to make sure that, have a look at this, check where the dollars are, uh, because we need to make sure that we'll be able to carry that across this way. And But for this one, it should really be locked. So this will bring us back the resource availability after allocation. Uh, we'll be dragging all that back. So I'm just wondering if I could use the same format painting here, if I, what would happen if I did this? Yeah, so as you can see here, this is not a pretty side, but uh, once again, we just want to hide it. It's a NR stuff, it was a dummy stuff too, so we can be consistent and we don't have to add another if in our formula, which is already complicated enough, so we just do this. Okay, so here we have the availability before and after. Now we can come back here on our projects tab and this is where we will bring back the resource allocation for each resource but that this time we will be putting that in front of the task so we will know for each task if uh, there is an over allocation or not. So in order to do this I just to simplify the formula just a tiny little bit I'm just going to select all these and actually I'm just going to do the NR stuff as well I'm just going to bring that back. I'm just going to select all these and I'm going to name it resources. So will that help or make things worse? We'll see. So this, this is uh, called the resources one. So what I need to do here for each week and each task, I need to go and get the, the resource availability. So here I need to go and get this and uh, bring it back. 
Now, this is the formula that I'm using. Okay, so it's it's uh, X lookup. So if you don't have X lookup, you're gonna have to do the V lookup one. Let me know in comments if you uh, if you get close with this. But uh, if if you can do it with X lookup in general, as a general rule, you should be able to do it with V lookup if you don't have X lookup. So the first thing I do is I check that uh, there is some requirement here that this field is not equal to zero for for that specific task and week, and if if there is uh, something in this cell here, I just go there and I retrieve for that resources the availability. So here, obviously, it will be quite big. There's nothing in the cell, then I put NR this way. Otherwise, I bring back the availability. So if I just copy that across. Okay. That's it. So we're talking about percentage. So I'd better bring, bring up the percentage. So here I just would like to do some conditional formatting so I can see things a little bit clearer. Uh, the first thing I want to do is if it's uh, negative, I want to put some red here. So I'm just going to go into conditional formatting, uh, new rule, and this time I'm just going to do it all. If this field here, make sure that there's no dollars because I want it to carry across. If this is negative, I want to format it in red. I'm just going to put the strong red and I'm going to tone it down. It uh, looks more like pinkish, doesn't it? Okay, so that's one. Now, if it's positive, just let's go back here. If it's greater to zero or equal to zero, then I'm going to put green. Now, when it's above zero, it doesn't really make sense for this because the ta it's not required for the task, but I think this is going to be down, go good. And uh, the final thing, I could have a, a green a bit more subtle maybe. Okay, that will do. And the final thing I want to do is, if there is NR in it, I just want to put it in gray. I want to put that in gray. Okay, so that's ugly, but um, We'll uh, do that a little bit uh, better on on this one. So remember the two tables that are at the bottom, uh, they will be hidden, they are not required. We just will be just uh, dealing with this. So here now I, I'm good. So I, I wanted to, yeah, I also wanted to gray those one out. Maybe should I just gray those out? Uh, in order to gray those out, what I can do is the one that have an NR here. I just can go here and I can duplicate this and and this time I'm going to refer to uh, the D go back from scratch so here D30 but I want to log the D uh, I missed it <laughs> and if it's the, the case I'm just going to also put an R uh, but uh, <laughs> I could put a different type of gray because it doesn't really mean the same NR, but okay, so here. Now I know this for this field, no resource was required, so it's all gray. And that, that means that the resource was required, but not for that specific week. So it's a different type of uh, not required. What I want to do now is I want to refer back to that table to, to give uh, some conditional formatting to that table. I want to refer to this table here. So in other words, here, I know that Rachel is too busy for that week. So I need to highlight it on here for all the tasks that have Rachel here. So I just take select, select it all and go under conditional formatting. I put on a new rule. I put user formula and, and I'm going to refer to this one here. And I'm going to click F4 until there is everything is gone here or no more dollar left. And if this is negative, that means that we have a resource problem. Okay, so let's go back into the red, more colors. 
are going to custom this time and I'm going to slide this up to find a pale red. We don't like to be too much in your face, so... And voila, so this was the whole purpose of creating this, is to highlight uh, the resource challenge. So now when we look at our projects, we know that there's a, there's a problem here. We know that Rachel Renis is too busy, just too busy this week here. But so she must be a year ago. So this is why she uh, she's showing in red. It's because she's away that week. She's not here that week. So we have a problem here. So, and then you can go back here and say, okay, well, she's away that week. So what if I move that here instead? Uh, I remove this. So now everything is good. She, you know, we have moved that task. That is to be, to be, that is to be taken into account. And then we can do the same with, uh, with all the others. I want to do other things to make it uh, a little bit easier for, for everyone. So first of all, I'm going to remove the grid lines. So the idea is, as you have your resources here, this is something that should you should change too much. Uh, you will be mostly working on the project and fine-tune this until uh, you find the right balance, the right allocation. So what I want to do here, I just want to do it the MS project way. Uh, I want to show the, yes, MS project, I copycat. Uh, I want to put a symbol here uh, that I will put in red when there's a resource problem on this. Because for the moment we only have 12 periods, but let's say if you want to go crazy and have, you know, you know, 50 or 100 periods, then you need to be able to see quickly which uh, task has a problem, a resource problem. So here I will be inserting its symbol and i will go here i think it's uh, there under wingdings no it's probably in webdings then webdings really webdings windings really uh, and i will take this man here there you go uh, so we need to center it properly maybe have the tasks a little bit bigger. So now I want to do some conditional formatting on this. I want to put it red when it's uh, the uh, it's uh, over allocated at some stage. Uh, but uh, I think that as I want to calculate the number of periods here, I might I'm, I should really do that before because that would make it easier for me to to do the the conditional formatting for this. So to calculate that period here. I just need to check on this one here how many are below zero. So I just do a count if. Count if the range will be this one here. And the criteria will be below zero. So zero. Okay, so here zero. And there you go. And here what I can do to hide the zeros, I can go into format cells and I can do maybe a custom one. With zero, I don't want to show it. So I just hide it using this trick here. And then to do the conditional formatting on this, I just uh, need to do insert no, conditional formatting, a new rule. And I just need to check this colon here, if, if, if it's greater than zero. So here, if this field here, press F4, because I want to drag it across. If it's greater than zero, then I know I have over allocation. So I just can put this, not the field, the font, because this is a font. Uh, put the font in red. Okay, and I copy that across. And now you can see I have our over allocation here for one week. The man is red for three weeks. And that's it. So if you are fussy, what you can do to remove those, you can either put a condition, but it's a little bit messy. And I think what would be easier to do is to go back to, to conditional formatting and you duplicate this. And you say, if edit rule, if the task itself, 
uh, which is c5 if c5 is empty then you f you put the font in white so you won't see it put the font in white and you apply it and they disappear okay so this is this has a white background because it's something that is calculated this has a yellowish background because you know we input stuff in uh, this yellow here uh, yeah okay now there is something else I'd like to do once again if we deal with plenty of tasks I want to be able to highlight uh, the task the someone here just to check like for instance if this one is over allocated I want to quickly see where is this guy involved well, it, this is not a good example because he's only involved in one one task but uh, uh, list style for instance over allocated at some stage no uh, Albert Musfold is over allocated but I want to check where else he is over allocated so we could uh, do this but let's say if you go crazy with this spreadsheet and you have 100 resources it'd be nice if you could highlight the those resources there so this is what I'm, I will be trying uh, to do so the first thing I need is I need to input a field here well let's say for instance highlight a resource and here I will be doing some validation data data validation and I want to put a list and now you've been waiting for that this is finally where this none comes into play and here I haven't fixed the zero yet but I need to fix it okay so here I should be able to select none I don't want to highlight any okay all right so now I can do this before I forget. So if uh, non okay non and uh, if resource b five not equal to blank resource b five resource b five otherwise I put blank and then it should the zero should disappear. I just don't know why it does that, but. Uh, okay now let's go back here so here I have done let's let me put a bit of a different background here just going to put some bluish different background uh, so here I can select a, a resource to highlight now here I need to do some conditional formatting so I select all these conditional formatting new rule and formula so if the field itself this field here without any dollar please is equal to this one with plenty of dollars then I can do a fill of a blue so I'm going a bit quickly because we have a lot to cover as I say and uh, let's see if it works so if I just select run booth he's highlighting now list styler highlighting but what I would like to do as well is highlighted on here okay now I need to select all this and I need to do a conditional formatting again a new rule and I want to check if the resource here the resource allocated to that row and in order to do this I need to press F4 to ensure that this doesn't move horizontally that should move vertically only so we need to make sure that the d is locked but not the five so i'm just going to put it this way d5 is equal to this and here we need to be locked completely and the format i just put a pale blue and that's it so now when i go here and i can just play with this i think this is good so something that uh, you need to make sure is like and it doesn't work here but you need to make sure that for instance if we look at list teller uh, that's okay uh, if we take Albert Manfred here for instance let's take Albert see the blue erases the red and that you could say that's okay because I can remove it but I think I think it'd be better if we could leave the red okay so in order to do this we need to play with uh, the rules so I just need to click on one cell of that group here and I do manage rules and I, and I make sure that everything is applied to the click on the applies to and I need to make sure that everything is involved 
what I need to do is I need to make sure that there is the right sequence. So it's just a matter of playing with uh, uh, the, the rules here. I think for me it doesn't really make sense the way Excel does it, but that's a topic for another lesson. So I just apply here and I just check. So what I've done is I've moved it. So I put this one first and this one is, is, uh, is second, <laughs> obviously. And then you can see that it still leaves us the, the red when it's required. And I think this is better. I mean, you might prefer it the other way. So in, in this case, you know what to do. Uh, but uh, OK, so I think this is good. This, this is getting very close to, to being ready, guys. He has mentioned, you know, you could, you could hide all this. Data group a bit neater. Uh, the resources um, still think that is <laughs> this grid is too too strong, so I just go into conditional formatting and I just want to uh, take a, an extremely going back to this and I say this is still too strong for me. I wanted something a bit more subtle. See, it's going soon going to be so subtle that we're not going to see anything. So. Um, yeah, so that's very subtle indeed. So I'm going to hide this resource availability after allocation. You might want to leave this because it could be interesting. Um, is there too many zeros here? You could hide the zeros. So it, it, just in case you missed it before, because I did it a little bit quickly. If you right click here, format cells, uh, custom, I think this, the second one is for negative. And you just put this uh, comma, uh, dot comma here. I don't know how you call that. You just put this here. And uh, here you put minus 0%. The second one you put minus 0%. And after you put nothing. So that should really hide it. Uh, and that's it. So maybe the font a little bit too, too big here. Yeah, I think I would put something smaller here. Um, a bit like here. So that's it. So as a recap, you can you don't have to have week here. You could put dates. Refer to my previous videos on how to put dates, or you can just put month and the likes. Make sure that for the resource allocation, uh, you refer back to the project's dates. So uh, so you are in line. You don't want to have July July here and June over there. And that's something that you don't want to, to do. You just put some comments here that, um, you know, in red where we have resource allocated. So people know for having a quick, quick look. Uh, here resource is the same. So you have the allocation here, 100%. Green is all good. And um, I don't like uh, to view those grids here. So I usually remove the green lines. And here you go. So this was a very, so it's it's uh, it's simple, but it's quite powerful. And this is where you can really play with uh, the overall location of resource. You can change them manually, and you can play around. Uh, for instance, here Albert, you want someone else here. Oops, no, that makes it things worse. But um, you have a look here, and you just check um, which one is has still capacity. Reggie seems to be uh, having plenty of good, good time here. So. I'm just going to put Regis oh, almost there. And then when you can really not allocate anyone anymore, you just need to, to move those and uh, give the guys a break. So say, OK, this is where I'm going to put this uh, this here this way. So this way I don't have any any challenges here. So if you put zero, yeah, you can remove this like this. OK, so I think this is it. Um, manual allocation, you can still refer to my other <laughs> humongous uh, spreadsheet where I do everything automated but with all the pros and cons. One last thing before we go is you can create links. If you don't want to have to go for the tabs, you can create links. So you just uh, insert a shape, uh, a shape because it has round corners instead of uh, inserting a text box. And here something you try and uh, uh, choose the same blue that was for the resource here. Uh, just I can't remember exactly which one I had. So I had that one. So this way we are consistent with colors here. And you input a text. So to input a text, you obviously double click. You put resources here. 
you put it in the board, you center it, season to test as I say, and it uh, doesn't seem to be a line, okay, so this, you can even be extremely fancy and put some, some shadow. And what you can do is you can, what you need to do is to right click and input a link. So, and you put place in this document and here you put resources. I know it's a small gain, but when you work quite frequently with this, it's much faster to, to do this than going back the <laughs> huge gain of time. And here you do exactly the same uh, the other way around. So you can duplicate this by pressing Ctrl D. Now you cut it, you put it here and you do it the other way around. I think we had some purple here, so we can put a purple and you obviously put projects. And you need to change the link, edit link. This time you go back to projects. So, and if you want to move it, you need to right click on it first, otherwise it's going to send you over there. So projects, I prefer it with a J actually, so that's it. So projects, resource, projects, here you go. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with this. I hope you liked the tutorial.